Hello, in this video, we are going to discuss a question from Winter 19. All right, and this question is regarding two point charges and the changes in electric field between them. So let's go. So, as usual, it starts off pretty straightforward state and expression. So, expression here means equations. Lah. All right, for the electric field strength E at a distance R from a point charge Q. So if you're the type where maybe a bit of sketching as you read the question will help you visualize it better, please go ahead. So let's say this is your point charge Q. And we want to know, let's say, at a distance of R away from Q, what is the electric field strength here? So by now, you should be able to recall the equation fairly clearly. Uh, e, would, in this case, would be KQ over R squared. Please follow them. If they use lowercase r, you should also use lowercase r. If they use uppercase r, you use uppercase r. All right. So next, uh, you look at this equation, right? You might be thinking, I am okay to ready to move on. But then you look at these two marks, uh, please tread carefully. Okay. In this case, right, k is a convenient constant. It's not the actual constant. It, was, it is highly suggested that you change this to 4 pi uh, epsilon naught r squared. All right, and then you look at the con the uh, expressions or the terms that has already been defined in the question. Question already defined E, already defined R, already defined Q. The only thing that hasn't defined is epsilon naught. Four and pi no need lah. Right, pi is a well known enough constant. But we should tell the examiner that you know what epsilon naught is, which is the permittivity of free space. Forget how to spell. Uh, please refer to the second page of your question paper in your list of constants. Copy the spelling there. All right. So I'm going to move on to part B now. We've got two point charges A and B situated 10 cm apart in a vacuum. Okay, this will always be in a vacuum, 10 cm apart, as illustrated in the diagram. All right. There's a very similar example in one of the other videos in this stream or channel. Okay, please check it out. Uh, the graph looks very different, but it's a similar question. So, point P lies on the line joining the charges A and B. Point P is a distance x from A. Okay, so basically we are going to move, I'm going to put point P as purple. So, I, I colored the charges already, all right? A is green, B is red, P is a purple point. Okay, P is not a charge, it's just a point, okay, in space. So, we're going to move point P like a probe. And we will measure what is the strength of the electric field along this entire line. Okay, so let's say you have a magical meter to measure the electric field strength. We don't have that meter, but let's say you do. So we are actually plotting out the electric field strengths at all the points between P, A and B. All right, and we get a graph that looks something like this. And actually, because of the scale of this graph, we only have readings from let's say three cm from A to around 7 cm from B. Whenever you see this dot 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 the dot 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 means you're extrapolating from current data. You didn't get this from the experiment, or this dot dot dot. Alright, so experimentally, we could only get from 3 to 7. Why? Don't know. Alright, so anyway, this is the graph that is given. I think the first thing you would notice is that this electric field strength seems to decrease to a minimum point and then increase again. And it's fairly symmetrical because the turning point, so to speak, or the change of uh, magnitudes is minimum. The E is minimum here at 5. So I'm just going to put a note here that the electric field is minimum. Maybe it's an important point. And second important point is that you will notice this electric field is always positive. Okay, so let's read the question. Wow, well, all the lines... <laughs> State and explain whether the charges A and B have the same or opposite sign. Nani, how do I know? Okay, so this one, uh, this question, unlike the previous example where they give you some guide or some hints, this one got no guide or same or opposite sign. How do I know? So when you talk about signs, right, we think about the polarity and of the charges. So basically, it's either... Um, of A and B. Yeah. So either they are both positive, positive, or negative, negative, or one is positive, one is negative. And you might be thinking to yourself, ha, 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 can tell me from this, this one? 
needs uh, they are always positive so it has to be positive positive wow like that so easy man your logic macam tak jadi okay so if they're if you're thinking about this then you are not on the right track lah because when you talk about signs this one is about polarity but this positive sign like for example this electric field is always positive the sign is not about polarity okay so let me write that down for you this one is also always positive But the sign, remember, electric field strength is a vector. The sign is for direction. So in electric fields, you have signs representing... Okay, la, electric field is complicated because your positive-negative sign can re represent three things. It can represent polarity of the charges, positive charge, negative charge. It can represent direction of vector. Nah, the force, the electric force or the electric field strength is to the left, to the right. It can also represent work done work done on or by the electric field. Okay, so please get your head on straight. Don't always like, oh, just simply, simply only on your sign. Just think about it. All right, so in this case, uh, if my electric field is always positive, you also should recall that this E is the result of EA plus EB. Because at all points between charge A and B, the field A on B is effectively acting on this. So let's say, for example, I want to draw... The direction of charges and i got two possibility let's say i guess let's say i assume that the charges are the same don't know ma just now you say positive okay no we guess positive positive so this is a uh, first guess if this is your first guess then you will notice that for point p so i'm going to draw the first guess here okay your point p right the electric field strength of a because it's positive, it's pointing outwards, away from A. So this will be your EA in this direction. This is EA. Magnitude, I, I guess it should be about the same because it's pretty symmetrical, you can see. Okay, anyway, EA. And then if you look at EB, the magnitude will be in opposite direction because they are both positive, ma, push away. So the direction of electric field must point away from the charge. And then you notice that these two are in opposite direction. So that means oh, there's likely a chance in between where the field cancel out. And furthermore, if let's say I take point P very, very close to charge A, or let's say I take this point P, okay, never mind. I take charge B, easier to see. Let's say I take a point very, very close to charge B. So let's say now my point P is here. Since I'm far, far away from charge A, it means that my EA is very weak. But I'm very close to charge B. So my EB is very strong. Stonk. It's a pretty stonk and strong thing. And let's say we just be like normal human beings and take the direction of right as positive. Can you see that this one, the resultant of E, is to the left. Because when you are very close to B, A is so weak. B will win now. So B wants the resultant field to be to the left. Likewise, if you push your charge very close to A, then your charge A will be able to exert a strong, strong field on point P. But charge B Will have a pretty weak field because it's far away. So from this case, you will see that, hey, the resultant would be to the right. One left, one right, because EA and EB will dominate at different position, shows that your ER should swap sign, have to swap sign. Your resultant or this graph has to have a negative sign somewhere. Either negative become positive or positive become negative. And in this case, well, it's always positive. Like our outlook to 2021 is always positive, right? Everything is okay, right? So here, you, you then just tell yourself, okay, la, since it didn't change sign, it has to be opposite signs. But... You are not very sure. Okay, also so you test again. No? This is why all the teachers tell you, don't leave your past year question to last minute because you'll be panicking already. I'm taking so long to do this question. How? 
if you are if you have done enough questions, you will not need to take that long because you're already experienced. Okay, so let's take a point here. Let's say I take a random, I said I'm going to go for point P again. So I'm going to maintain charge A as positive. So EA is going to still be pointing in the same direction. But charge B is now negative. So a negative charge will exert a field that is pointing inwards. That way, EB is also pointing in the same direction as EA. Let's do the proximity test or close test. Very close. So I park the charge very close to charge B. Same thing. EB is very big. And uh, EA is very weak. But you can see they are all pointing in the same direction. In fact, if I do the same testing sequence very close to charge A, the electric field of A is very big. Hang on, I label wrongly. Just green is EA. Okay, so EA is pretty big and then EB is very small. You can see no matter where you draw, EA and EB is always pointed in the same direction. So it will always have the same sign. And in this case, the same sign here is positive. So this second guess is the correct one. So if you didn't do enough past years because your priorities were different and then you do this in the exam, you will have eaten up 10 minutes of your time, but then that is one way to do it. Or if you've done enough past years, you should be able to tell just from the shape of the graph that this is always positive. If you memorize the graph, you might not be able to explain because you could memorize the graph without understanding. All right. So how do we write that down? Well, since our second guess is the correct one, correct, correct, put a lot of check mark beside it. So... First order of business as a student is I want to get the mark first. Huh? So I will write the conclusion first. Huh? So the charges have opposite sign. Okay, opposite signs. And how do how did I deduce this? I could say that the field, the resultant field did not change direction. So you see in this case, the resultant field did not change direction. In all three vector diagrams, EA and EB is in the same direction. That means the, e, the resultant is always in the same direction, which is reflected in this graph because the graph is always positive. Okay, so we shall write that down. We will say that because the resultant or your E field between charges A and B does not change direction. Okay, so hopefully you are also writing this together with me. Okay, um, you could also say sometimes that the electric field, and these are resultant electric fields, huh? so maybe I guess I'll write resultant for you. Okay, so I have written that the, this is about the resultant fields. So the resultant fields between A and B doesn't change direction, or the resultant fields between A and B is never zero, which is how you know that they have the opposite sign. Because if you look at a vector drawing, EA and EB will always point towards the same direction. So this one, we can use a vector drawing to explain. But let's look at the second part. State and explain whether charges A and B have the same or uh, different magnitudes. So I think at this point in time, either you instinctively can tell from the shape of the graph based on the axis of symmetry or the minimum point, or you don't know. But when it comes to magnitude, right, basically they're asking you, is QA equal to QB? Yes or no? It's a yes or no question, okay? Please don't write essay. Yeah. So at this point here, you will notice that because it's symmetrical, right, let's say I take a point, Look, the graph only gives me from 3 to 7 cm. So I'm going to take a point at 7, I don't know, 3 cm. 3 cm is closer to A. Okay? Because remember, A is here. A is at 0 cm. And B is here at 10 cm. So at 3 cm, you have EA, very, very strong. Again, the... Arrow is just to show relative magnitudes, okay, not the actual magnitudes. And then you've got EB here. But if you check on the opposite direction, you can see that their magnitudes are the same. Meaning to say, 
although here you are closer to B and EB is the same, EB is greater, but when you take EB plus EA, they both come out to the same resultant. So this one here, this EA. So for both cases here, this ER and this ER are equal. So right here, these two are equal. So EA, ER, which is once again EA plus EB, is the same. And if you check every single coordinate along this curve, that kind of looks like an x square graph, kind of but not an x square graph, uh, this one, if you look at the equation, it's not an x square graph. You will notice that every single point you take, they have the same magnitude. They just keep changing direction. So if you consider the equation of E is equal to kq over r squared, you will notice that, hey, uh, if let's say I take 3 cm, when x is 3 cm, the distance of A is 3 cm, but the distance of B, let's scroll up a bit so I got space, the distance of B will be 7 cm. Okay? Let's say now you take x is 7 cm. So we flip, look. Ra is 7 cm and Rb is 3 cm. So when you exchange the distance, 3 becomes 7, 7 becomes 3, there at this two point, you didn't change the resultant. And the only way for you to not change the resultant is to maintain the change in electric field strength. So EB became the, from the weaker one became the stronger one and vice versa for EA. So when you add them together, you get the same number. And only the only way to exchange this way is for them to have the same magnitude. All right? So I'll write that down first and I'll give you an alternative way to think about it if it still doesn't sit quite right with your big brain. Okay? So you could say that the minimum of the resultant E field is at x equal to 5.0 cm, which is the midpoint. Or you could say that the graph is symmetrical. Hence, symmetrical about x is equal to 5 cm. Hence, the magnitudes are the same. Okay? So I think it is more important that you mention that it is midpoint more than 5 cm, although they mean the same thing of A, B. All right. So you might be thinking, is there another way for us to decide these two properties? Um, there is another way, but you should also consider it as like a extension because it's not really required in the explanation. All right. So if you want to watch the other way, you can keep watching or you can skip ahead. Lah. Refer to a timestamp. All right. So let's think about the, the other alternative graph that we can use. For example, we know E is negative dV dr, potential gradient, right? E is equal to negative potential gradient. So this means this graph is actually negative the gradient of vr. So we can sketch the vr graph. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can observe. And we don't need an exact sketch, we just need a shape. Okay, do you know what's the... So you can see this gradient, this value is always positive. Meaning the grade, negative the gradient, this gradient will always be negative. Can I? So this BR, this number here, will always... The gradient is always negative which means the graph will go down this way, okay? For the beginning, you will notice that ER decrease, so the gradient will decrease. Last it until ER is 0. Here. This is 5 cm. For more information about sketching this graph, go watch the lecture video, okay? So is this all this should be familiar to you by now. So you can get this kind of graph that looks like this now, like that s shape point where the bottom point is the point of inflection 
Okay, so something like this. But you know why this is important? This point gives us a critical information that we really hope that we had, which was this V is the resultant of VA plus VB. Right? So here, your V is 0. 0 is VA plus VB. So if I rearrange, I will get VA is equal to negative VB. Oh, interesting. Because if VA is equal to negative VB, and I transfer this one over here, I can include the equation of B. So this will be K, Q, A over R, A plus negative K, so equal, not plus, equal, equal, equal to negative K, Q, B over R, B. So I substitute the V equation inside here. All right. And you will notice that since we are at the midpoint 5 cm, RA is equal to RB because RA plus RB is 10. So hence, I can say that QA is equal to negative QB. They have opposite polarity, this negative sign here. Opposite polarity, same magnitude. But if you use this mathematical way, right, you cannot or you don't know how to write the correct explanation. This is why it's a level 3 question now. You have to know what kind of explanation to write because you can't... If you write all this, I cannot guarantee you get the mark because it's a bit too much. But if it's for those of us who struggle a bit with the equation and want to be able to settle in our own brains uh, that, hey, indeed, because this is symmetrical, then the magnitude of charges will be the same. Okay, so this symmetry shows you that the inflection point is at 5 cm. So this means the inflection point that cuts the horizontal axis is at 5 cm. So when it cuts the horizontal axis at 5 cm, and since this V is the result of VA plus VB, I can say that the magnitude of VA and VB will be the same, but they will be in opposite sign. This plus minus sign shows who is doing the work. Uh, okay. So when we substitute the equation, and since RA is equal to RB, what you are left with is QA is equal to QB. So this is for your own brain. But when you explain, please default back to the original explanation, which is that the graph is symmetrical. The minimum is at the midpoint, so the magnitudes are the same. All right. So let's look at the final part. An electron is situated at point P. Without calculation, explain the variation in magnitude of the acceleration as it of the electron. Okay. As it moves from 3 cm to 7 cm. Okay, beautiful. Please answer the question. Uh. So they whenever you read this kind of question and you see the many lines, and then you see here, wow, four marks there. You please make sure you write your explanation very clearly. Alright. So please first thing you will notice is that they want you to write or talk about state and explain variation in magnitude. Do you need to talk about the direction? Just the magnitude. So variation in magnitude, then you should immediately think about words like increase, decrease, no change, minimum, maximum, etc. Those are the words that you use, okay? Magnitude. Magnitude of what? Acceleration. So you only need to talk about the acceleration. Please make sure you don't talk about other stuff like I don't know, la, the potential, la, the field strength. La. But means, ah, they give me the field strength graph. Leh. Shouldn't I use the field strength graph? Oh, that is correct. But before you have the license to use the field strength graph, you need to explicitly tell the examiner or tell the question, hey, question, this is how electric field strength is related to acceleration. So how is electric field strength related to acceleration? Eh? So let us think a bit. Ah. Acceleration. Hmm. I know that F is equal to ma. Good old equation. And I know the re if the electron is going to accelerate or decelerate, this force will be the electric force. And this force is equal to QD. 
and the given graph is the E graph. So this means I can substitute these two, right? I can say that uh, MA is equal to QE. Mass of the electron is constant. Charge of the electron is constant. So I can say that A is proportional to E. So you have to have a statement that talks about the relationship between the given graph and the physical quantity that they want you to state and explain. All right. So I think first order of business is I will write out the relationship. Okay. So I will say that since force oh yeah, F equal to QE, la, since the electric force is equal to the electric charge times electric field strength, and F is equal to MA. Hence, the acceleration of the particle, acceleration A, is proportional to the electric field strength. This is the first mark. Okay, so the danger here is, the good news is in this mark scheme, this is a B1 mark. Whenever you see a B1 mark in the mark scheme, it means that I, as an examiner, if I see this, I'll give you mark. But if this is a M1 mark and you didn't give this mark, you can easily get 0 out of 4 because your considerations are faulty. You didn't explicitly, explicitly show how electric field strength is related to acceleration. So if they want to tighten the mark scheme, it's well within reason because why you talk about electric field strength when I ask about acceleration. So you have to make that link first. But once you make the link, then it's free for all hour. You can write. So let's refer back to the graph. Our graph here to here, let me change color. You notice that from 3 cm to 5 cm, the value of E is decreasing. Right? So I will say here that E decrease, meaning acceleration decrease. Okay, if you are feeling a bit unsafe, you can say decrease with a decreasing rate because the gradient is getting less and less. Throw back to your A to AS kinematics. Now at this very special point, your E is minimum, electric field strength is minimum. So acceleration also minimum. Okay. After 5 cm to 7 cm, so here to here onwards, bloop, your electric field strength begin to climb up again. So your acceleration will increase. So if I'm a student, I'm guessing each point here, blue, red, and green, got one mark. So I'll write them out one by one. Okay. And also make sure that I state the distance. Lah. Don't just say acceleration decrease, minimum, then increase from where to where. If they were explicit about the position, explicit means they obviously got to tell you what's the position, you should also try to be as well. All right? So you can say from x is equal to 3.0 cm to 7.0 cm, the electric field strength decrease, I mean, I guess I can just use symbols, E decrease. Hence, the acceleration decrease. You write full sentence uh, during the exam. Okay. So, at 5 cm, which is our beautiful turning point, the, S, the electric field strength is minimum. Hence, acceleration is minimum. Okay, and then finally, you can say from x is equal to 5.0 cm to 7.0 cm, E is increasing, so acceleration is increasing. Again, please write sentences. Okay, so if you are not sure and you just want to cover all your bases, understand, you can always mention that acceleration is decreasing at a decreasing rate. 
Why? Because the graph is getting less and less steep. It decreases slower and slower. You see, when you're close to 3 cm, wow, the drop very big. Leh. When you're closer to 4 cm, eh, the drop is not so steep anymore. Okay, which means for the green color part, it is increasing at an increasing rate because you can see this graph is getting steeper and steeper. So as usual, CIE is not always very consistent. Sometimes they are more strict. So it is always in your benefit to just write a little bit more. But this is not needed in the mark scheme. Okay, so this one increases at an increasing rate because the gradient is getting steeper. So that is where you get your four mark law. Normally, if you do enough questions, you can actually map out where the marks are. One. Because from the graph, there are three different properties that you need to talk about, which is decrease, minimum, increase. But why you suddenly talk about acceleration when the graph is electric field strength? That would be the fourth mark. And because these are all B1 marks, so as long as you write, even if you write the last three, but you didn't write the first one, I can still give you three out of four. But if they are strict about this and they only give this, they give this as M1 and all of this as A1, meaning if you didn't link E and A, again, I remind you, then they can, you can get zero or four, which we hope it will never happen to you. So at least have to have an attempt to try to link electric field strength, which is what is given in the question, to what is asked from the question, which is deceleration. All right, so that is the whole question. Okay, so please do more past years. Okay, if you find the videos helpful, please share, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.